In this next segment, we're going to start putting in some trim in this little house. And let's get started. So to do that, we're going to be using some of the custom Masterworks objects. Vim server library, Masterworks, and Making this harder than it should be. It's down. There we go. Here's the list. And I think we can just go to a list. And it's MW casing version 2. Not this one. This one is obsolete and should be deleted but so use mw casing 2 and this is a pretty powerful object that can do a lot of different things and i'll go ahead and take a minute and show you what it can do so first of all we're going to do a door and we're going to choose a profile so we don't have any good profiles in here so let me get some going the first thing we need to do is complex profile. So we're going to hit 5 for complex profile. We're going to hit this button here for new. And let's do trim. Let's do trim hyphen base. And that gives us our, we're now in a complex profile. And I'm going to go steel, copy. Uh, so this is our masterwork shopping again, and I have tons of base profiles. I'm going to take this one arbitrarily, control C, come in here, control V, nice big base, and I believe we're going to want to go to here. So this is our base. This does not require an object, but we'll just save that. The next one we're going to do uh, trim hyphen casing go back into the shopping file find a piece of casing that we want to use control C it's over here I believe it goes that way. I often make this mistake, but let's test it and see what happens. So we have a casing and we have a baseboard. So let's go back into 2D. This window out of our way. Now if we go back into that casing and we do MW. Now, ah, we have a problem. It's not showing up. I'm glad that that happened so that I can fix this problem for you because it's a little bit subtle. You got to have this little chair selected, and we're going to want to use this as a beam for our trim. So these are the two we want to select for the base, and we'll just do the same for. So if they're not showing up, that's the reason why. So now we'll go back into the object. And now that casing is showing. And we're going to be doing a win let's do a door frame. Simple. I'll sh give you the heads up here how this works. And we're not seeing anything um, in 2D or 3D. Another subtle little thing um, that can drive you crazy. So we're going to go into casing, edit, for these objects. Select that, and this has to be finish. And if you want, you can override the surface, and we'll put masterworks 
trim interior one. So that whole surface will be Masterworks trim interior one. The alternative is you don't override the surface and you're limited to what's here. So, uh, which may work. That wood trim may be just fine. And we save that. And you'll notice that now, Our trim is showing and that must be the material associated with the building material so we do want to go and edit this in a couple different ways one we're getting we'll show the outline so we can see it and then we do want to override the surface and we'll save it and we were The trim was actually backwards, so we're going to mirror this and just see which way this needs to go. Let's save that again. Go to 3D. So we've fixed the material and we've also changed the orientation. So now that's the direction we want our casing to be in the complex profile. And I have to admit, it is something I often have to play with to get it right the first time. Now this object, we're telling it's a door and we have some offsets here. Um, so these hot spots are the nominal dimension and then the actual trim itself is being expanded past that and it's dropping three quarters further into the floor. Now we want to change this. Uh, what I'd like to do is let's get this guy. I'm using the space bar, by the way, to if I click with with the magnet on, then if I click in the surface of a any element, it'll select it. If I hold space bar, it turns that off. And then I can box that in, and that's a convenient little feature here. So we want this trim. We're going to scale it, and we're going to hook it to those points, and then this needs to come out. And the way we've set this up, that gives us the reveal of a 3 8 reveal over the jam. And we extend this up. We need to click to that point right there. So we don't have that point. So you can choose how these overlays work. And if you need them to be a negative number I'll overlay like that and then we actually have take this connect to that point take this come down On. Got that corner. Either to slide it over. And get in there. And actually what I like to do here is use the dimensions. So this is four foot eight. And we want to set this up so that we're using, and maybe that's a better way to look at this. This should be seven foot point seven five inches. And that zero in there. Elevated 
0.75 because the door is elevated 0.75 and the width should be four foot eight. So the whole point of this is to set up these offsets so that you can use the nominal dimensions and everything works out. So let's see what we need to do here. So these are the nominals and we want to set this to the center. So those are just right. And then we want to make the offset three eighths out. So maybe that is just right. So the height's perfect. And There you go. That puts us right where we want. Actually, I want this point. Let's make sure this door is elevated. Yes. So these numbers are, and I think we want this to be seven. All right, it's a lot easier than I, And I made it look. So the door is four foot eight, seven foot, three quarters. The trim is seven foot, three quarters, four foot eight. So all those numbers match. And then we want to make the jam three eighths bigger. So I'm sorry to complicate that. And then we dropped it an inch. So it goes into the floor or however you want to do that. If you want to set that drop to zero, so it just depends if you want to undercut it. So and see what a nice trim that works. And now I know that seemed like a lot of work, but what's great about this is once we have it, we can do an F10, flip this around, take this. And Take this F5 and put it right there. Spacebar, drag, F9. I'm going to take this over this door. Oops, too much. F9, 6, R75, and sometimes it's actually easier to use the center point, because if I run the center point to here, this is a 30 inch door, change this to 30 inches. Now that's set up, so once you get this going, it's really fast. And then I can actually take this two at a time, F5, Control-Alt, that's going to give me my multiple copy, and then I can just start going to town. So, sorry to make that look hard there for a minute. And all of a sudden, we got missing casing. All right, so let's see what happened here. Oh. 
F5, Control-Alt. No, I need the control. Let's get this rotated back. I don't know what happened there. Now we'll do F5, Control-Alt. Oh, all right. Did something wrong, but... All fixable. So you can see with, you know, 20 minutes, I could, well, five minutes, I could go put all the casing around all the house. So let's look at um, the baseboard. Baseboard's really easy. And we're going to go to a beam, tell it complex profile, going to select the base, and let's see what magic wand's going to do for us. Looks pretty good. Or does it? Interesting that when you magic wand a beam, it wants to go one direction, and I don't know how to make it go the other direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into complex profile to the base. And we're going to do a little mirror on that. Save. I'll do the same thing. And now the base is inside the room, which is great. And we can do a control A. And now beams are able to have a cover fill. And even if we just want that to be uh, an empty fill, well, not an empty fill. I want to let's do a foreground fill. No, I want to do a back background fill. Doesn't matter what that is. That's that gives us the little white band. And what we need to do now is obviously there wouldn't be any base behind our cabinets. Delete that. Um, anywhere there's a door, you can split that. And you're going to want to pull it to the casing. Now, I don't have all the casing in, so you don't know where to stop that. But. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I can bring this down here, and there is no snap point. Um, maybe that's something I need to add, is a snap point at the edge of the casing, so that's easier. But what I generally do is I hold it here. And turn on my working sections. So let's go Q, sections, working. I'll move those into position, and I'm just gonna have to move these around. Open with current settings. Got a problem. We'll fix that in a second. Actually, I'm going to fix that now. So all these beams need to move up four and three quarters. Let's do that before we forget. Beams, Control A, F12, 4.75 inches. Now we can go back to our working section. Great. And I don't have my casing here. I could copy my casing here, which is nice. That. Here we want to give it the dimension. This is 4 8. Long.
Now I can either set this in plan or I can just do it here. And once that's in, I can select this and I can just come in here. Now I can actually snap. my casing right in there. And I love this concrete casing, tile casing. Um, so what we can do, this is coming from the building material that's being used in the complex profile. So we can come in here. That's up for masonry, that's why it looked that way. We can do wood trim, that was gonna give us the wood. We can do, uh, and this one doesn't have to be finished, but I think it's good uh, to do that. Um, here we can override trim interior one, that's gonna override it. Let's give ourselves an outline since that one's light. And we can save that. Come in here. And we got some nice trim. Then we just take our time, move our section around, and get all this split. Double mouse wheel to zoom. And you can see just how sharp that looks. Uh, really turns out nice. Now I don't have any wood going under these doors, but you know, with minimal effort, I mean, that's very authentic. That's the real deal right there. It looks great. It's dimensionally accurate. Um, it's kind of a fun little process to to see how this can come together. So I'm going to split this. Drop this back to here. Drop this one over to here. Okay, comes together nicely. Let's, while we're here, let's take a few minutes and see what else this object is capable of. And we're gonna wanna create uh, one more complex profile. So let's create a new one here. Trim door header. Go find. We'll do something really over the top. Control C. D. And I don't, again, I never quite know which direction this should be, but let's assume that's correct. And. Trim that off, split tool, and let's make sure we do everything right here. Great. And let's see how this works. So we're going to go to 3D. And now I'm going to go to the properties of the object. And instead of having a simple door, we're going to do a door with a header. And the head profile is going to be 
Oops. Thought we got it right, but not quite everything. Cancel that. Turn on that for an object. Doesn't have to be the beam because we're not using it for the beam, but in case you wanted to, you can. Not going to use it as a wall, I'm sure. And then we go back into here. And we'll let's see if it works. Sort of. So let's see what we need to do. Try flipping this over. F7. Not quite. <laughs> I've never done one this big. Maybe there's a issue. Let's flip it back. Save. And I think that's okay. Bear with me. There's also something called a head back thickness. Head overhang one. Don't panic yet. Not time. Okay, and I see the problem. So I should have gotten this set up properly to begin with. So what's happening is I was using the door in the wrong direction. This is the direction it should go, and my casing was just spun. So that's that backer distance I was talking about. That's more than we need. One inch is fine. We don't need it to overhang that much. Let's get this turned around. So we're almost there. Now we need to handle our casing. Oops. Try pushing it onto this side. And this just is a little trial and error. Um, so now it's almost there. Mm. Where tenacity is important. It's better to be doing when you're not being watched. And you're all probably watching and thinking, let's do this. Hmm. 
Okay, I guess that's it. All right. So we have our header, major header. We have a little backer that spaces that element out. And now we can put it up against the wall. Drop it in the center. So you want a big, crazy molding. There you go. So now we can, let's back up here and see. So we want this facing this way, pointing down. And we want our door header facing the same direction. So everything's facing the positive X direction. With our baseboard, put it in the negative X direction. So just a couple nuances to keep in mind. Uh, obviously, it can be a little tricky, but the answer's generally there. Let me show you a couple more options with this. Copy this over to the window. Spin it around. I don't like to use mirror. I don't have to. Actually, these were mirrored. So keep that in mind. If you can not mirror it, I think it's preferred. <clears throat> so now we're going to set this window is 6 by 5, 8 foot head. I'm going to take this. And we're going to make this a window with a head. We'll use the same trims, same backer, same overhang. We'll adjust these overlays. So these are overlays. So they're going to come in, whereas the doors had offsets. Okay, so the offsets want to go out. So that's something to remember. Windows come in, doors go out, and we want to set our height. This was six, height is five, and I think we're going to add a three here. Yeah, I'm lucky I got I just have to set that the center. Okay, that looks great. And it's overlaying. The window's actually up. Looks like that should be three foot because the window is an even eight and five. So three plus five is eight. So that makes that just right. And if we want to see what else is possible. So we have a simple casing or just wraps. We have a head, what we just saw. We have just a sill, but I need a sill profile. So let's real quick, don't want to spend too much more time on this. Hit five for complex profile. Uh, door header. We're going to copy it. Window sill. Edit it. And instead of the hotspot being on the bottom, we need to bring this down. Everything else should be the same. Gives us a nice sill. And sill overhang is how far the tips are past the casing. A little bit further, there's one inch. And we also have the choice of doing a head and a sill. 
So it just depends on how much you want to get into this. And then the last thing I'll show you. is you can also just do frames with this and do a rectangular frame. You can do rectangle with a notch. You can do don't use negative numbers that doesn't work and we can do a radius is this round corners and I believe do inverted corners so lots of choices this you can make different panels um, real simple object to use change to any any cross section you can make mirrors out of it you can make wall panels out of it windows doors anything you want and then the last thing we'll do is we'll very quickly Take our door header, copy it, make crown molding, delete that. I want this to be lined up with the corner of the wall and work. This at the right height. Copy the parameters. Let's delete it. The, the magic wand's upset, so we'll just. Let's make this in dash one while well, we need first place. Yeah, magic wand's too hard. Um, we could turn some layers off and get that to work, but it's easier for us to. Quickly trace around the room. Face the drywall, not don't get confused with the baseboard. All of these casings need to get flipped around from my previous mistake. And 
there you go. Trimmed out. Looks great. Um, pretty nice. Some clean up here. And the last thing we'll do... is we'll take a ceiling slab. Top is a 10 foot one, it's 5 eighths thick. And this, you could do room by room. That's probably the most accurate way of doing it. Let's just do that. And the drywall actually sits up above Up, oh, you know how to fix that. Remember, that's just your cover fill. Here we'll do a empty. I'll, I'm going to do a fill that we can see for a few seconds here. And you, if you want to just cheat, you could just run it over the whole thing. It's totally up to you. Um, but what's cool about this is that all of a sudden, we're starting to get a room that's fully trimmed out. Obviously, we would need to bring all of our crown molding down. All the little nuances of life, huh? One little tr more trick, one more trick. Control F brings up the find and select board. Uh, I have this highlighted. I'm going to pick my crown molding, so it's going to change. The element is a beam. And I need some other way to distinguish this. The easiest way is to find the complex profile. So we'll add the field for complex profile. And so now when I hit plus, it's going to select all beams that have a complex profile of trim. And then I can hit F12. Bring it down 5 eighths of an inch. And that's a real nice, quick way to adjust all of his crown. And the reason that's looking a little funny is because I need to select these three faces and bring it out to the edge of the wall. Nice transition. If this were a Header over this door. We'd want to run this crown. Into here. Might be a better design. Bring bring something down here. Um, and then put an opening in the wall. But anyways. Alright, well that gives you a real good idea of how to use uh, just standard beams, complex profile, managing your surfaces. Uh, that works for the base and the crown. And then we have the Masterworks casing that can do windows, doors, and individual frames um, any way you want. And the last thing on here I didn't show you is you did want to put a slight angle to this. Um, that might make a fun mirror or other picture. We wanted to make it look like it's hanging a little crooked. So, all right. Hope you enjoyed the video.